Sarah Weiler from Contemporary Education. Today I'd like to talk about student agency moving from theory to practice. So just again in most of my videos I'm setting this general context of why student agency and the development of student agency is so important uh, in our contemporary society. And that's because all too often we can walk into a school and walk into a classroom and everything is predetermined and dictated and students are just meant to follow along with what has already been decided. Um, so what they're going to do, the order they're going to do things in the classroom, um, if they're working with others, who they're going to work with, how they're going to use the space in the classroom, how much time they have for the different tasks um, that they must accomplish. And it goes on and on. So they're meant to just follow orders and obey commands and they're not put in the position to think about choices, making those choices. For instance, how can I use space and make choices about my use of space? So instead of everyone in the class doing exactly the same thing in exactly the same way in the exact amount of time and the exact use of space and the exact kind of uh, organization of relationships and interactions, the exact use of resources, offering options of how different spaces could be used in different ways. Um, so on a very concrete, practical level, setting up different stations around the class and in those different spaces, they have different affordances for different types of action and different types of decision making. Leaving the use of those spaces and resources um, open for students to make choices about what they're going to draw into the teaching and learning process um, as a tool to help them to, to achieve their goals. So that's one idea related to stations, but stations where students really have choices about how they use those stations, the resources, the spaces, how they can, another, another issue related to this is time, how they can organize themselves in time rather than having a circuit where everybody has a certain amount of time and there's a timer and they switch. This still doesn't give the student decision-making power over uh, their own time, how they're going to use time in different activities, and also thinking about questions of personalization, how some students need more time for certain tasks while other students need less time for the same task and how they can make those own determinations, those self-determinations based on their own characteristics and self-knowledge. So in relation to time, in relation to space, relation, relation to personalization, which gets into time, but also can get into the kinds of um, products that they make. So let's say students are doing um, a research study on a specific topic, the product of that research study could be varied. It doesn't have to be everybody producing exactly the same product. There could be multiple possibilities of products that students can produce and they have that decision making uh, power to decide what they're going to produce, what's going to be most meaningful to them. Another thing I've talked about in other videos is students being able to choose uh, topics to study within a larger topic. So maybe they have something very, uh, a, a broad topic or concept or system of concepts, many different interrelated concepts that they're studying in one discipline or across many different disciplines. And they can study something more specific, a more specific question to re conduct in, uh, research upon. And that also can be something that they're offered choices about, about the specific uh, subtopic that they will investigate. In terms of relationships and interactions, um, there might be some task, let's say, you wanna give students the opportunity to choose a task amongst five different tasks that they need to accomplish over the week. Instead of everybody doing each task together in the same amount of time, everybody doing the same thing, those five tasks could be um, given up as options and students can decide which one they'll do first in the order. And those five tasks could be within one discipline or many different disciplines. Maybe one is a math task, maybe one is a science task, maybe one is a language arts task, etc. 
Um, but we also have to think about not all tasks are independent tasks, and some might be independent for some students and not so independent for other students that might need some uh, a support from the teacher or a more experienced colleague. So we need to think about that when we set up opportunities for students to make decisions about how they order what they're going to do. And in doing so, there could be, for instance, let's say one task you can identify as this is a task that is uh, above the level that most students can do it independently. So in Vygotsky in terms, it would be in the zone of proximal development and they may need some additional support. And the teacher, of course, that support could be from a more experienced colleague, that support could be from different resources that are offered as mediational tools in achieving the teaching and learning objective. But let's say that the teacher decides, no, this is a task that I really want to be there at least observing and <clears throat> supporting in the way that I see fit or I see necessary with students. So that one, let's say there's stations set up among, in the classroom, one of those stations, the teacher would stay more at that station as a kind of stationary post where students would be circulating, making their choices. But at that particular station, the teacher would be more present in giving some support and additional resources and also observing and evaluating what students need in relation to that task. Now, I've talked about giving students opportunities for making choices, but I also want to talk about this other element that is critically important, which is how to hold them accountable and co-responsible for the decisions that they make. So first tool that I think it's important to take into account is setting up agreements with students about when they have these choice times. And those agreements could be first like listed and brainstormed on the board with the teacher as an active participant. Agreements may include taking care of our, our shared spaces, that everybody shares responsibility on their, the materials and the resources and the spaces that they're taking care of them as they're being used, that they stay on task, that perhaps they work quietly, they're careful um, about not disturbing others who are, who are also at work. And another important aspect of accountability is that they have to show their work that they've completed it. Maybe there's a checklist that could be also a poster on the wall. It could be a digital resource on a tablet or a computer but that they have to show that they have completed their tasks. So it can also be checking off on this list as well as providing the physical work that they've completed, the physical or digital work they've completed. And when agreements are made, always remind students before they go about their choice time of those agreements, not necessarily by telling them, but just asking them, guys, remember that we made a set of agreements and let's go through and just uh, review what they are. And after those agreements are made, they could be created um, as a post in a poster format to be on the wall. So they're permanently there as a reference for students while they're in groups um, and doing this choice work. And then also using the same tool of the agreements, having um, a moment after choice work to reflect and say, so how did we do on staying on task? How did we do on cooperating or collaborating with others and taking turns? So there's this moment of reflection because it's not a mechanical kind of action. It's something, it's a tool meant to help them become more consciously aware of their actions during that time. So then the next time that they do it, it's reviewed, they have their choice time and it's reflected upon so that every time they can improve the quality of their choice making and how they're sharing that responsibility for the choices they make. The teacher can also uh, be working in a way throughout this kind of choice time where the teacher could pull a student or pair of students aside and do some mini conferencing during the choice time so that it's another form of holding students accountable as well as giving students support they might need with the tasks that they are engaged in. Well, I hope this video helps uh, educators in the classroom 
think about developing students agency both at the macro and the micro levels and that you can make some changes and adjustments to your classroom planning that puts students in a decision-making position with accountability and co-responsibility. Please check out my other videos on developing students agency and I thank you for watching.